Hey guys, it's Sal. In this video, I'm going to install Jesse for algo trading with Python from scratch on a brand new MacBook Pro M4 Max, which has an Apple Silicon chip in it. You could also use the Docker installation, which is also very easy, but it won't give you native speed, which is important if you want to make sure that your backtests are being executed as fast as possible. So let's get right into it. So first, I'm going to set up Python itself. However, instead of using Python alone, I'm going to use this tool called Miniconda, which allows us to set up isolated environments. This is super helpful because it allows me to separate my Python applications from each other so that the dependency packages that we're going to install won't conflict with each other. So I simply Googled Miniconda. Let's open it. Now let's go down and go to the installing Miniconda. I'm going to go to the Mac OS and because I'm on an Apple Silicon machine, I'm going to copy this, open the terminal and paste it in. Depending on your internet connection, this is going to take a while. All right, now that this is done, let's try the conda command. All right, it says after installing, close and reopen your terminal application or refresh it by running this command. Let's give this a try. All right, it works now. Perfect. Let's copy this one. Now try it again. And now it works. Okay, so in case you missed it, first you need to run this command for it to recognize the conda command and then run this command for the changes to be permanent. So now whenever I open a new terminal command and run the conda command, it will work. All right, so now that we have conda installed, we can begin creating our first conda environment. So I'm going to say conda create and then I will pass a name and I will call it simply Jesse and then we can pass the version of the python that we want i'm going to choose 3.13 and hit enter so now this is going to install even python itself for me which is another benefit of conda environments because with typical python environments sure you can separate your packages but you cannot separate your python versions all right so it's telling me this let's press enter and wait for it to finish downloading all right, now that that is done, we can activate it by saying conda activate and then pass the name of the environment that we specified earlier, which in this case would be Jesse. So now to confirm that we have Python indeed installed, I'm going to pass this and it says 3.13, which, which is correct. I can also do the same for pip and we've got the same thing. All right, perfect. All right, so now we have Python itself, but there are a couple of other things that we also need for Jesse, such as the database. And for that, I'm going to use a very cool tool for macOS called Homebrew. There's a good chance you already have that, but in case you don't, let's install it together. I just Googled Homebrew. Let's open it and just copy this command, open the terminal, a new tab and paste it in. I'm going to enter my password, hit enter, and we're going to have to wait. And notice that it's telling me that it needs to set up the Xcode command line tools first, which is required for most of the development stuff on macOS. And we're done. But it is giving me some instructions to make sure that homebrew is inside my path. And I'm just going to copy this command right here and paste it here. And also this one. And this one. Now to make sure everything works, I'm going to open a new terminal window and in it called the brew command and it works just fine. All right, I'm going to close the previous terminals. Next, I need to set up Redis by simply calling brew install Redis. All right, now it's telling me that to start Redis now and restart at login, you need to run this command. So I'm going to copy and paste it. And we're good to go. All right, next I need to set up database. I'm going to say brew Install PostgreSQL at sign 17 to make sure I'm setting up the version 17, which at the moment of making this video is the latest version, but there might be newer versions when you are watching this video. If that's the case, there's a good chance that will be already supported by us, but in case it doesn't, just set up the version 17. So it's telling me to first run this command so that the PostgreSQL can be found inside my path. Now, by the way, in case you don't know what a path is, let me open a new terminal window. So for example, when I run the brew command and it recognizes this command, this is because the homebrew is inside my path. Now, what is my path? To see it, we can run the command echo and then path. And in this long string, you can indeed find homebrew. 
So you see, because I have it in here, it knows that when I run the brew command, basically this is what I'm referring to. This one, for example, is for Miniconda. And this is a common issue actually, that sometimes you install a package and you run the command, but the terminal just doesn't recognize it. That's because it is not inside your path and you need to put it there. Now the command that it is giving me here, if I copy and paste it, it will ensure that it is in my path. However, there is one important note, and that is the command that it is giving me is echoing this line or copying it, let's say, inside this file. But the reason it is giving me this file is because I have zshell installed on my terminal. So for you, this may be another address. And if you do want to set up zshell just like me, which will give you some cool stuff inside the terminal, just go to the Google and search for zshell macOS. Open the first link. Go to the install and just copy and paste this command and you should be good to go. Anyways, back to the task. So it's also telling me that for compilers to find PostgreSQL, you need to set these two values. So I'm going to open this simply by saying open and then pasting the path. This will give me the code editor. Let me zoom in. And now I'm going to copy these two lines and come down and here, and I'm going to paste it here and save this file. It's also telling me to start PostgreSQL now and restart at login, you need to run this command. So let's copy and paste it and we're good. All right, now that we have the database, we can move on to create a table and user and password for, for Jesse to be able to use it. Now, in case you need to copy and paste these commands, just go to our documentation inside the environment setup and macOS and you can find them here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste these All right, so now that we have those, we should be good to actually install Jesse itself. I'm gonna open another terminal just to make sure everything's fresh. Now notice that I don't have Python in this page. I mean, I do, but it is the default one on macOS. So if I run pip dash dash version, you will see that it says Python 3.12. Now, I believe this was installed by Miniconda itself, but still, this isn't the one that we wanted for Jesse, which was using 3.13. And that's because by default, this is saying base, which means it doesn't have the Jesse environment. So to activate it, I'm going to say conda, activate, and then Jesse. Now inside here, if I again say pip version, I'm going to get Python 3.13. And lastly, I'm going to say pip install Jesse. All right, everything went just fine, and now I should be able to create my first Jesse project. Now to do that, you can go to whichever directory that you want, such as the one that I am in right now, which is my user on my operating system. Anyways, to create a new Jesse project, simply go to our documentation, go to the installation, and then create a new Jesse project, and copy this command, which will clone a new project for you and name it my bot. Now this name here is optional and you can name it whatever you want. So I'm going to call it test project and hit enter and we're done. So now I can CD into that project and next I need to create my .mv file. I'm going to do that using the cp command to copy from the example file which is called .env.example and then I will pass the name that it needs to be for me to be able to run the project which is .mv. Right, so now we have everything we need in order to run the project, but I need to edit this file, which is why I need a code editor. If you don't already have a code editor, I suggest using the Visual Studio code, which is perfectly free. You can download it for macOS, but I have already done that. So I'm going to open it now, and this will be the first thing that you will see. Now at this point, I need to install the code command for my terminal to recognize it so that I can easily open the project from within my terminal. For that, I'm going to hit Command, Shift, and P, and look for the install code command in path. If it goes fine, you should be seeing a message like this. And by the way, sometimes you need to open another terminal tab for this to take effect. So if that's the case, just open another tab and notice that I am still inside the same directory. And now if I run the code command, it should work. And because I want to open the current directory for my project, I'm gonna hit space and then dot. Hit enter, and now we have our project. Now check this box. Yes, I trust it, and we are good. All right, now I need to edit the .mv file because the default values 
have been set to work with Docker. So I need to change this value to localhost. So I'm gonna comment this line and comment out this second line. And then I will do the same thing for Redis. Now, if you own a premium license, you need to generate an API key from this address from our website and then paste that API key in here. All right, let's go back to the terminal and now I should be able to run Jesse. To do that, I'm gonna simply say Jesse run. All right, so why am I getting this error? Well, we installed Jesse inside the Conda environment, but now notice this, it's, it is saying base, which means I haven't activated my Conda environment yet. And this happened because I just opened a new terminal tab. And whenever you do that, you need to activate it again. So again, I'm gonna say Conda activate Jesse. And now if I run that command one more time, it should work. The first time I ran this, it took me a while for it to start, but if I stop it using Ctrl and C and run it one more time, you can see that it is started instantly. All right, so if you are seeing this, that means we are running it successfully. So you need to copy this address and paste it inside your browser. In some cases, I've seen this not working, and if that's the case for you, you need to replace this 0000 with localhost, like this. It's asking for a password, which if you remember inside our project, we had it here. So whichever password you set here will be used inside here. So I'm gonna enter test and we are successfully inside the dashboard. To make sure everything is working, let's go to the import candles page and try to import some candles. And it is working. All right, next, I want to make sure that I have the right plugins, which would help me to write the code as fast as possible. So let's go back to the VS code and I'm going to remove the Copilot tab, which by the way, if you install Copilot completely, you're going to get autocomplete in your code, which is really helpful. But that's not what I want right now. Right now, I want to go to the extensions and look for Python. First, you need to set up Python by Microsoft. Now I already installed it. Next, install PyLance, which will give you autocomplete. Lastly, we need to make sure that the right Python version is selected in our project. So let's open the command palette by pressing Command Shift and P and look for Python interpreter and choose select interpreter. And now you should be able to find your conda environment, which you found earlier. Now this is it, the one with Python 3.13 and the name of the environment is Jesse. All right, now to make sure it works, we need to open a Jesse strategy. Now by default, all the projects have this example strategy. So let's open that. And you can find it also here, the strategies, example strategy, and then it's init file. So now if everything worked, when I press the option key and hover these, I should be able to go inside them. So it is working perfectly fine. but. Why did we install dot extensions? Well, the reason is because now we have autocomplete. So for example, let's say I want to use the TA module, which is imported here. So if I press TA and then dot, I'm going to get the complete list of all the supported indicators. So for example, if I press EM, it will bring the EMA for me, and it will also tell me the accepted parameters for it. I hope you found this video helpful for setting up Jesse on your Mac machine. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.